Yes, Ms Grogan, you're going to call the next witness, I understand. Uh, yes, Mr Chairman, it's John White. Thank you. Would you ask Mr White to come in, please? I do solemnly, sincerely and truly declare and affirm that the evidence I shall give shall be the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Thank you very much, Mr White. Would you like to sit down and make yourself comfortable? Thank you. <coughs> All right. Yes, Ms Grogan. Thank you. Can you please give the inquiry your full name? My full name is Jonathan White. Thank you very much for coming to give evidence today and to assist the inquiry with its investigations. I'll be asking you the questions today. If you have difficulty understanding anything I'm asking you, please ask me to repeat the question or to put it a different way. And also please keep your voice up so that the transcribers can hear you. Now you've made one witness statement for the inquiry. Um, it's in a folder on your desk. Yes. Uh, and it will also appear on the screen in front of you. Uh, can I please take you to the first page, uh, which is JRP 50330, so that we can see it. Uh, and then the last page, page 9. Uh, it's dated there 27th of June 2019. Do you see that? Yes. Okay. Is that your signature at the bottom? It is. Can you confirm that the contents are true? Yes, I can. Have you discussed your evidence with anyone before coming here today? Only with my lawyer. And when was that? Um, before this, this has all started. Oh, some time ago? No, um, just recently. Oh, all right. Yep. Thank you. I'm going to ask you first about your qualifications and experience. You've set out your experience in your witness statement. Uh, going back to page one, please. At paragraphs four to 12, I'll just summarize it uh, here for you instead of reading it all out. Uh, after school, you attended a civil engineering college. Yes. You then undertook a five-year management program with Molum, which is a major construction company. And that included a one-year full-time city and guilds qualification in concrete and general construction. <coughs> Yes. You were with Molan for 26 years? Uh, 25, 26 years, yes. Uh, moving on now to page two of your statement. That continues your career history. Uh, you left Molan in 2000, uh, and you say there you undertook various jobs, including surveying housing stock. Uh, do we take it you mean their local authority housing? Yes. You joined John Ryan Partners in 2009. Uh, that's at paragraph 10, as a clerk of works to be contracted out. Is yes. that right? <clears throat> and then during your time at John Ryan Partners, you spent five years as a full-time clerk of works at a project in Haringey. Correct. Now, we have a copy of your CV, which was included in John Ryan Partners' bid to KCTMO. If we could turn to that now, it's JRP 50295. And if we go to page four. <clears throat> Have you seen that in that format before? Yes. So on this page at the right-hand side, we can see a list of projects that you have been involved <clears throat> with. Uh, thank you. The fourth bullet point down, Brunel University project, it refers there to having carried out external works. Uh, did that include any cladding? No, it didn't. It uh, was mainly re-roofing works and internal fitting out, painting, decorating. And were those buildings high-rise buildings? No. Next one down, Homes for Haringey project. Is that the project where you were a full-time clerk of works yes. for five years? It says their works included major refurbishment works, internal kitchen and bathroom works, and complete m and &E renewal, new roofs, cladding, windows and decoration. Yes. <clears throat> Were those works similar in nature and scope to those at Grenfell Tower? No, no, no rain screen cladding, apart from one 
job at Tulock Court where we had a, um, a rock wall and rendered recladding. Answered my next question. Was that a high rise building? It was, yes. And you said they're rock wall and rendered? Yeah. On that project, did your role include checking for compliance with the building regulations? No, we, we never had a role of, of checking compliance, but we, we checked that the building control officer was checking and there was no issues. Just pausing with your CV for a second, it says on the left-hand side that you joined JRP in 2006. Um, your statement says 2009. Is that an error in this version of your CV? Yes, it probably is. Um, I did work for a period of time uh, for John Rona Partners, uh, not, as a, not as a full-time or, or working full-time for them. So I think I worked the, for them for about six months before they asked me to go full-time. Was that as a freelance contractor? Yes, yeah, when I started, yes. Aside from those projects listed on your CV, prior to 2014, did you have any experience of the recladding of residential high-rise buildings? No. Have you ever been involved in a building project that used ACM before, aluminium composite material? No. Uh, and what about PIR insulation in a rain screen cladding system? No. Or phenolic? No. Was the Homes for Haringey project uh, using the rock wool and render system, was that the only cladding project you've ever done? Well, cladding could be classified as anything that's on the outside of the building. So, yes, I've done lots of uh, brickwork, uh, some glazing, uh, stonework, and other other sort of cladding, but never, never a rain screen cladding apart from the one at True Lock Court. So Grenfell was your second rain screen cladding project. Yeah. Your CV also states that you are MICW and MCIOB. On, yeah. You see that on the left. Uh, what does MICW stand for? Member of Institute of Clark Works. Uh, and what an MCIOB is member of the Chartered Institute of Building, is that Correct. right? Yes. Uh, do either of these memberships require you to carry out CPD? Yes, I've, a I've actually uh, stopped being a member of MCIOB, but I I'm still an MICW, and yes, they do, and so does our company. Our company do training. We'll come Very on to that. Training. Yep. Uh, MCIOB then, when did you stop being a member Oh, many years ago. Uh, how many hours or points does the MICW require you to do in terms of CPD? I couldn't tell your friend how many. Uh, between 2014 and 2016, were you compliant with your CPD requirements? I would say the number, tr the, the training that, that uh, JRP do is probably normally more than what is required. <clears throat> Moving on to a new topic now, um, which is your awareness uh, and knowledge of the building regulations. <clears throat> Were you aware of the requirements of Schedule 1 Part B, fire safety, of the building regulations 2010 um, in 2014? Yes, I am aware of them, yes. Uh, were you aware of Part B3, internal fire spread? I am aware of them, yes. B4, which is external fire spread? I mean, all the building regulations, I've been in the industry 45 years, so I, I, I know I've got a, a general knowledge of them, but I wouldn't say I know uh, everything about them. Were you aware that there was a requirement in B41 that the walls uh, should adequately resist the spread of fire? Uh, not specifically, no. Uh, were you familiar with the guidance in approved document B? Um, not specifically. When you say not specifically, do you mean 
you knew it existed, but you didn't know what it contained? Yes, yes. So would you have been aware at the time that there were different routes to compliance with the building regulations as set out in approved document B? Sorry, could you repeat that question? Uh, were you aware at the time uh, that there were different routes to compliance with the building regulations set out in approved document B? Not specifically. Uh, were you aware that approved document B provided that for buildings of 18 metres or more, insulation used in the external construction should be of limited combustibility? Not specifically. And again, does not specifically mean not at all? I knew there were regulations regarding uh, tall buildings, but not, I wasn't actually specifically, I didn't know the exact knowledge. Did you have an understanding of what the term limited combustibility meant? I think probably now I do, but maybe at the time I didn't. Had you heard of the term national class naught? I have heard of it, yes. Um, were you aware of what that meant at the time? No. Uh, were you aware at the time of working on Grenfell Tower what the requirements in relation to cavity barriers in an external wall were? I know if they're being specified that they, they were then required. Um, perhaps if we go to the text in approved document B at this point, it's CLG 50224, <coughs> page 82. So that's the guidance there, section 9 on concealed spaces. If we scroll down to diagram 33, so that shows up on the screen. Have you seen that diagram before? Yes. Um, would you have been aware at the time of your work on Grenfell um, where cavity barriers ought to have been located in accordance with that diagram? So we see and there the floor, at the compartment floor, floor lines. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, around the windows? Yes, they may be required or may not be. Yep. When you say may, may be required, may not be, uh, approved document B guidance is that they should be around openings. In what circumstances would they not be required? When the design says so. And is that all you'd ask? You just ask the question, does the design say they need to be provided? We don't check on my role as a site inspector, I don't check for compliance, but I check that the who is the person is doing compliance, which is a building control, is is inspecting, and if they have any issues, then follow them up. Okay. Um, we'll come back to cavity barriers under a separate topic later. Okay. Have you ever attended any training or CPD on Part B of the building regulations? No. Were you aware of industry guidance that provided commentary on Part B4 of the building regulations? Uh, so, for example, BCA technical guidance note on the 18th, date of the 18th of June 2014. And I'll just give a transcript reference here. So we don't need to pull it up, but for the transcript, it's CEP 307294. No. Uh, were you aware of the subsequent version of the BCA technical guidance note 18th of June 2015? No. For the transcript, that's CEL 402347. Uh, what about the CWCT technical note 73? No. And that, again, for the transcript, CWCT 6019. Were you personally aware of any previous fires that had been linked to ACM cladding? No. Um, were you aware of the fire at Lacknell House in Southwark? Yes, I do remember it. But I didn't specifically remember it as a, a cladding fire 
I thought it was a compartmentation fire. Uh, were you aware of any of the fires that took place in the in high-rise buildings in the UAE in 2012-2013? Um, no. Uh, were you aware of the fire at Knowsley Heights in 1991? No. And Garnet Court in Irvine in 1999? No. When you say aware, you're aware at the time, but obviously since, yes. since then, since the fire, it's obviously been well documented. Were you familiar with the CDM regulations? I was roughly familiar, yes. Uh, in your experience, how do the CDM regulations apply, if at all, uh, to someone carrying out a clerk of works or site supervisor, a site monitoring role? I would say it doesn't, it doesn't, um, a clerk of works or site inspector wouldn't have any C CDM. <laughs> Um, responsibility. I'm now going to ask you about uh, John Rowan and Partners as a company. Uh, you've said in your statement at paragraph 10, <coughs> you don't need to go to it, uh, that at the time you joined JRP, there were three clerks of works working in your department. Was that the position as at April 2014? Yes. And that's three including you? Yes. So that did um, vary, you know, month by month. Is that because JRP took in contractors to then hire out, so freelancers? No, we did have staff come and go. You've mentioned um, John Rand Partners providing CPD and training to its employees. Uh, how often was that? Um, it's continual. Uh, they, um, they have, often they have uh, sessions during lunchtime in the office, uh, and they do have one or two day courses as well, which, which um, we're encouraged to, to go on. Was any of that training mandatory? <clears throat> yes, there were some mandatory ones like health and safety training. Would health and safety include fire safety? No, that would be general site safety. Uh, did any of the John Ryan Partners training cover the regulatory requirements such as the building regulations? No. Okay. Uh, did it ever cover fire safety in terms of the safety of the construction of a building rather than site safety? Uh, no, the only aspect they did was fire risk assessment of, of, sort of existing buildings and that would be to check um, fire doors and, and um, smoke detectors, etc. It would be on the existing building. Was fire risk assessment something you ever did as part of your no. role? Aside from formal CPD and training, uh, were you expected to keep up with industry knowledge about materials and products that are used on building projects? Yes, I, I expect we would always expect to. And um, I would read construction news or, or, or building magazine to try and, try and keep up with any information. Did any of the CPD that you undertook um, more broadly, so not just what John Round Partners provided, did that <coughs> cover part four of the building regulations? No. And up to 2016, did you ever attend any industry seminars or events where high-rise rain screen cladding was covered? No. We go now to John Round Partners' bid uh, for KCTMO for the Grenfell project. That's at JRP50295, and it's <coughs> page 16. <coughs> While that document's coming up, um, did you see the bid submitted to KCTMO at the time? No, I didn't, know. So in the third paragraph of that page, it says there, uh, furthermore, CPD is paramount to our company and all staff are encouraged to obtain professional qualifications. We've discussed that. There's then a bullet point list at the bottom. It says, during the past six months, our clerks of works have undertaken the following courses. And then it lists them there. Yep. Advanced domestic and electrical heating, UK ATA asbestos training, FIRAS fire risk assessment training, Condensation, damp and decay, MS project, health and safety on site. 
had you undertaken any of those courses? Yes, all of them. <clears throat> and had you undertaken them before 2014? Yes, I believe so. I'm now going to ask you some questions about JRP's contract with the TMO for the Grenfell refurbishment. Did you know that John Ryan Partners was bidding for the Grenfell Tower job at the time? No. You've said in your statement that you were not involved in the tender process, and you've said now that you weren't aware of the bidding. I think we can take it from that then that you had no input no. at all. No. Uh, did you see the invitation to tender from no. KCTMO? Did you see it at any point up to the fire? So is that a document that you have seen before um, Grenfell Tower fire? Yes, I did get a copy of um, the tender document probably uh, in the summer of 2015. That's the first time I saw it. Before the summer of 2015, uh, did Mr Verdi ever explain to you what, what it said? No. Um, did he explain to you the duties it set out that the Clerk of Works was expected to undertake? No, Mr Verdi would never... I, he wasn't my direct line boss. That would be someone else, L Luis Zoroa. Uh, did Mr Zoroa ever tell you what was in the invitation to tender and what it required of a clerk of works? No, but he just outlined the job, really. What did he say? That it was a refurbishing job, tower block, and roughly described what work was going on. And in order to, for me to familiarise it with myself and work out what I was going to do, it was to meet the client, Claire Williams, uh, at the beginning of the job and, and determine what we were to do. Now, you've told us that you were then provided with a copy of the invitation to tender <coughs> in summer 2015. Did you read it? Yes. Okay. Uh, we'll look at some of the specific terms in a second. Uh, were you aware that under the design and build contract with Ryden, the KCTMO did not have an obligation to engage a clerk of works? Was I aware of it? Yes. No. Were you ever told why KCTMO decided to appoint a clerk of works? No. Did you attend an interview with the TMO before John Ryan Partners won the tender? No. Were you aware that Mr Batty had? I found out later. Uh, Mr. Batty is uh, Tony Batty, who was the other Clark of Works employed uh, through as a, as a subcontractor to JRP um, to do M&E work. That's is that right? Site inspector, yes. Yeah. Can we go now then to the invitation to tender, which is at JRP six zero eleven, page one. So we see there it's entitled Site Monitoring and Supervision Services Improvement and Enhancements to Grenfell Tower. Going on to page four, please. <clears throat> At the top, under the heading Requirements General, it states, KCTMO requires an organisation to provide two clerks of works to assist in the supervision and monitoring of the works. One clerk of works should have experience in mechanical and electrical installations and the other with building works, brackets, ideally with experience of the installation of external cladding. Uh, and then it goes on to outline what the anticipated time requirement would be. Uh, were you aware in 2014 that KCTMO had specifically asked for someone with experience of cladding? At what time? At the beginning of the job? Yes, at the beginning of the job. No. Uh, and do you know if KCTMO were ever informed that you'd only been involved in one cladding project, one rain screen cladding project before this job? Yeah, I think you need to, I mean, the cladding, as I said before, cladding could be anything. It could be brickwork, it could be glazing, stonework. So, you know, I have got lots of experience in cladding. But do you know if KCTMO were ever informed that you'd only been involved in one rain screen cladding project? I, I don't know. 
further down into the box, um, so further down the page to the next half. <clears throat> we'll see there that the ITT sets out the duties, and it says the duties of the clerk of works shall comprise but not be limited to. Uh, second bullet, have access to the drawings and specification and be <coughs> familiar with the same, using them as a reference when inspecting the work. Do you see that there? Yes, I do, yeah. Uh, sixth bullet, taking measurements and samples on site to make sure that the work and the materials meet the specifications and quality standards. And third bullet from the bottom, being familiar with legal requirements and checking that the work complies with them. Do you see that? Yes, I do. Uh, would you say that description accords with the tasks a clerk of works normally undertakes? Yes. In relation to being familiar with legal requirements and checking that the work <clears throat> complies with them, is that something you have been told by your line manager in 2014 would be required of you? So could you say that question again, please? So in 2014, yeah. being familiar with legal yeah. requirements, did Mr. Zaroa tell you that that was going to be part of your duties? Not specifically, but um, by checking that the legal requirements were fulfilled by other people, I would say that that's what I did. So you considered that to be part of your role? It didn't need to be said? Yeah, part of my, my, my site inspector role is always to check whether building control had visited site and whether, whether um, they had any issues and whether they were resolved. There's a difference between checking whether building control had checked and checking for yourself. Is it your evidence that that duty required you to check that building control were checking? Correct. But not that you had to check for yourself that the work complied with legal Correct. requirements? What did you understand legal requirements to be? Well, they, I think my requirements on site was the two legal requirements. First, it was the health and safety, and the other was the building regulations. Um, so you agree they would in, legal requirements would include building regulations? Yes. In the industry, is it a standard requirement for Clark of Works to carry out that role, being familiar with legal requirements and checking compliance? I would say no, not for actual check of compliance. We never check or sign off for compliance. Uh, we're going to go into some more detail about the scope, so the scope of your role on the <coughs> Grenfell project. But at this stage, having seen those duties, uh, would you say they are more consistent with a site supervision role or more consistent with a clerk of works role? This is a. This is, looks like a general clerk of work specification of a role. What they do. So, in his witness statement to the inquiry, uh, Tony Batty uh, describes his role. And if we pull that up, that's SDA five zero two three eight <clears throat> at page nine. And he says there at paragraph 36, which is about two thirds of the way down, second sentence, if there are aspects of the installation, installation which I inspected that appeared not to be in compliance with the building regulations, I would note that in my reports, but it was the standard of insulation rather than the detail, sorry, rather than the design which I was checking. Uh, is that what you did too on site? As I walked around, I, 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 if I saw anything that, that, uh, like for instance, any um, fire doors or anything that, that I saw that um, I felt didn't comply, um, then I'd, I'd actually 
bring it up on my report, but I, I never actually checked the details of the compliance. That was done, I think, by building, building control. And had you familiarised yourself with the requirements of the building regulations as they would apply to an external rain screen cladding system before no. commencing your role? No. So in terms of being able to note any obvious non-compliances, you wouldn't have been equipped to do that, no. would you? Why didn't you familiarise yourself with the requirements of the that, building That wasn't my role. Move on now to ask you some questions about the scope of your role. If we go back to your statement at paragraph 13, which is on page 2, you say there, it is important in my opinion to explain that there seems to be a misunderstanding in what my role, and by association that of my employer's JRP, was on the Grenfell Tower project. Whereas I have stated above that I was a full-time clerk of works on the Haringey Council project, this was due to the fact that I was involved in the whole building project each and every day. In respect of my role on the Grenfell Tower project, a more accurate description of my role and function was one of site inspector or site monitor of works. This was because our role was far more limited in its scope and our overall involvement. Yes. Uh, you then go on to explain the difference between a clerk of works and site inspector... Uh, monitor in paragraphs 14 and 15. If I can summarise, you say a clerk of works is based full time on a particular on a particular project for the whole project. Yeah. And a site inspector or stroke monitor visits site on an intermittent basis and tends to have a far more limited role. What do you mean by far more limited role? A site inspector uh, role is is purely dedicated by or instructed by the client of what, what they want in terms of, of what we need to inspect, how long our visits were, if they wanted a what sort of report. Uh, but generally, a site inspector would carry out the snagging at the end of the job or to check all the finishes. So it would be, the snagging would be consistent, but the, the actual duration, the type of report, what they want to look for, varies according to different projects and different clients. And what would you say is the difference between a site inspector and a clerk of works? I would say a clerk of works is generally a term used as a, as a person would be involved with the job from right at the beginning of the job, from design, going through planning, um, pre-contract meetings, to, to looking after the actual construction and then doing all the snagging and then maybe 12 months after checking the 12 month defects. So the role will be completely um, from right at the beginning of the job to right at the end and even after the defects. Can you help me with this? If you, um, <clears throat> if you were instructed as a classic clerk of the work, so to speak, would you expect to produce regular as were descriptive reports on what was going on? No, because I'd be there all the time and, and I'd, be, um, I'd be there at all the site meetings. I would have my own office. I'd have all my drawings. Um, so I wouldn't have to report. I'd be there all the time. So would, would you be recording what was yes. going on? I, mean, I would have a... Normally you'd have a diary, a daily diary. You'd record everything and you'd be involved in, in all the decisions and all the meetings and... And, and, you know, a, a far much fuller role than, right. than a site inspector. And, and you would then be, would you, the, the eyes and ears of the building owner? Correct, of the client, yes. Right. Whereas, if I've understood you correctly, forgive me, um, if you're a site inspector, the degree of your interest, shall I say, in reporting is, is a matter for the client to tell you what he wants you to do. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Right. that's helpful. Thank you very much. Yeah. Sorry, Ms. Krogan. Thank you. That's very helpful. Um, so as far as I've understand your evidence, it's in both cases you'd be reporting to the, as is often described on a construction contract, the, own, the employer. Actually, uh, originally, the clerk of works 
would normally be employed by the architect. Mm. Uh, but recently, it's, it's normally the client. Under design and build contracts specifically, what's the practice? Oh, it's normally the, normally the client. Thank you. <clears throat> so would a site inspector become familiar with the drawings and specifications and use those as a reference for checking the work? No, not necessarily totally familiar. Um, you know, if there was issues or, or when I was doing my site inspection, if there was areas where I was unsure of things, then I would then go back to the office and check the drawings, specification, then. Uh, would a site inspector take measurements on site to make sure materials and work meet the specification and quality standards? Not unless I was requested. Uh, and would a site inspector check for compliance with legal requirements? Only check that the compliance team was checking and they had no issues, and if, if so, I'll report them in my report. So the answer to the first two is no, but the third one is yes, a site inspector would check that building control had been on site? Yes, yes. Having looked at the invitation to tender with me, do you agree that it was intended that JRP would do all of those things? Um, I've seen lots of tenders, and they promise the earth, and they talk about lots of things, um, but, you know, as a site inspector, really, um, we would be focusing on speaking to the client and see what they wanted, what, what they wanted done. And that's what happened at Grenfell. So when you saw the tender then in uh, 2015, were you surprised to see those obligations? No, set out it's, there? it's a general clerk of works site inspection uh, description. But your evidence is that you were carrying out the site inspection role yes. and that a site inspection role is more limited yes. than a clerk of works role. So why weren't you surprised then to see all of the duties for a clerk of works? Because that's often, often the client puts everything down as a, as a, a clerk of works. So, you know, the, the term clerk of works is confusing, confusing to a site inspector. You go on to say it paragraph 16, uh, which is at the bottom of that page that we have up, that from experience the role and scope of services of clerks of works and site inspector varies very much from client to client, <coughs> and then moving on to the next page, the paragraph continues, and you've already explained this to us today, you say a lot however depends on what the client considers a clerk of works or a site inspector's role to be and what they require out of the role, Yes, and that can vary from project to project. Uh, on the basis of what you've said there and what you've said to the inquiry today, would you agree that the written terms of appointment are therefore an important reference point for defining what the clerk of works role is to be? No, not really. The, on the tender, no. I mean, I would say the most important thing would be our meeting with the client. Do you agree that calling someone a clerk of works or a site inspector doesn't on its own tell you what that person has been contracted to do? Yes, people do mix up the two. Would you agree that the terms are often used interchangeably in the industry? Yes. Would you agree that it's not the case that a clerk of works has to be on site every day? Um, depending on the job, if it's a big job, I would say yes, definitely. Um, but if it, even if it's a little job, I'd expect the clerk of works to be to be there right at the beginning on, on the, the conception, the, the design stage and being involved with all the site meetings uh, and then go all the way through and then do the defects. So it's more have being involved throughout the length of the job, whereas, um, for instance, Grenfell, I, I started in, my first visit was in February 2015, my first official visit, which was some seven, eight months after the job had started. In his witness statement to the inquiry, and we, we don't need to bring it up, um, but the reference is SDA 50238, Mr. Batty doesn't make the distinction that you make between mm. the role on Grenfell as a site um, supervisor and a clerk of works. Yeah. Did you ever discuss the scope of your role with him at the outset of the project? Not specifically, no. 
So you never sat down together and agreed, well, we're being site inspectors on this job, not clerks of works, and so that affects what we're going to do? I don't think it really made a difference. We discussed um, that he would be looking after the M&E, and i will be looking after the, the, the building works. Staying with your witness statement on page three, if we go down the page to paragraph 20, <coughs> you say there that we, JRP or myself, were never provided with a formal brief or description of what my actual role or specific remit was until I attended a meeting on 16th of September uh, with the client. If yes. we go now um, to JRP... Six zeros ten. <clears throat> uh, and scrolling down the page to the email at the bottom, uh, this is an email from Claire Wil Williams to Gerpal Verdi, dated 8th of July 2014. And we've heard Mr. Verdi's not your line manager, but he was the person leading on the bid to KCTM, wasn't he? Yes. Uh, she says there, I'm writing to introduce myself as the project manager for Grenfell Tower, for which your organisation was appointed General Building Clerk of Works on 12th of June 2014. I'm just reviewing the terms of your appointment to make sure that I understand <coughs> the exact basis of the appointment and will be in contact with you probably next week. Did you see that email at the time? No. Yeah. Uh, did Mr Verdi ever tell you that the terms of appointment were still under review? No. She describes JRP there as a general building clerk of works, not as a site inspector. If we scroll up on that page to the next email, which is Mr. Verdi's reply. Um, second line, he also refers to you there as a general building clerk of works. Do you see that? So our general building clerk yes. of works is likely to be John White. Yes. Um, were you aware that Mr. Verdi had described your role to Claire Williams in that way? I wasn't aware, no, but I can see it now. Do you accept that that may have caused some confusion as to what the nature of your role actually was going to be? It's the confusion of the clerk works and site inspector. I mean, um, I would always clarify that by, by when we had a talk with the client, we'd, we'd determine what our role was. And did you clarify that with Claire Williams on the 16th of September? Yeah, we talked about what she wanted us to do, uh, and, and that's what we did. Did you ever say to her, I am not a clerk of works, I'm a site inspector? No. Did you ever explain to her what the difference in your mind between those two things was? No, because uh, um, you know, everyone gets confused about the term clerk of works and site inspector, so um, we, would, we were anxious just to carry on and do whatever she wanted us to do. Going now to another uh, chain of emails, which is JRP50334. Uh, and on page two, please. Uh, zooming in uh, at the top, we see this is an email from Louis. Is it Louis or Luis? Louis. Louis. Louis, Louis, Louis Zoroa, yeah. Uh, Louis Zoroa to yeah. you and Tony Batty. Yes. Uh, containing his notes of a meeting with Claire Williams on 16th of September. Uh, so that's the meeting we were just talking about. Yeah. Was it the three of you who attended for JRP? Yes. Yeah. Um, and of course, Tony Batty was employed by a separate company, but he was a subcontractor. Yeah. I should just make that clear. Um, from what you said already, it's clear you recall that meeting, don't you? Yes. Um, can you recall what Claire Williams said to you about what she wanted you to do on site? Well, I think a lot of the, the notes are, are there. Um, she she wanted her, us to be her eyes and ears, um, and she, specifically she wanted us to include in our reports the KPI. Um, she wanted us to to, to um, record any issues to her only to report to her uh, and she was very concerned with the residents and she said you know please can you make sure the the residents are, are happy the works and 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 keep a good eye on them uh, so 
on page two, sorry, we're on page two, um, under the heading there, Clerk of Works Rule, just at the bottom, <clears throat> it says no instructions but report black to client um, and uh, to Max Fordham. Does this mean that you were not given more detail about what your role was to be? No, that, I think that was, I mean, again, if you look at different roles, clerk, a Clerk of Works role uh, you would be able to issue instructions uh, but she specifically said we were not to issue any instructions. Um, I see. So that means don't issue instructions, not yes. we have no instructions yes. about what we're required to do. Yes. I see that. Yes. Yeah. Um, did you inform the impression at the time of that meeting that you were not being asked to perform a typical clerk of works role? Yes. And on what basis was that? Um... Well, the, main, the, the biggest basis was that uh, here we were, we, we were meeting in, in September and the job had already started in June. So, um, you know, if, if, if it was a clerk of works role, it would be, we'd be already be involved with, with, with everything that's going on. I see. Um, on page three of that email, uh, you'll see there's a number of headings there under items to flag up it says building fabric cladding windows internal finishes uh, so you were specifically asked to look at the cladding the windows and the internal finishes yes, yes. Uh, did Ms. Williams say anything in particular she was asking you to look out for no she, that was general items uh, and under the heading uh, info required from KCTMO, which is right at the very bottom, I think we need to scroll down, uh, it says spec of works and MI manufacturer's instructions. Um, so were you expecting to have a copy of the specification for the project? I think in an ideal world um, that would be nice, but in, in reality it very rarely happens. Uh, and what happens when we go to site... Um, obviously there'll be a copy of the specification there and drawings there. I mean, often the case, I, I had uh, maybe five jobs in a week, so I had one job a week, so uh, it would be possible for me to have five lots of drawings and specifications. So I normally use the information when I go to site and I know it's up to date. Uh, so it was... It's easier for you to have all that documentation on site rather than to take it away and yes. read it another time. Yes. Okay. What did you mean by specification there in that at that meeting? Well, specification of, of, the, the, of the job. Would that be the MBS specification? Yes. Would that also be specifications of subcontractors that were building on the M MBS? Um, no, we wouldn't normally normally get a copy of that but we wouldn't normally get a copy of the specification we, we would we would normally um, observe it and look at it when we went in the site office why did you ask for it at this meeting then if it was more convenient for you and it's normal practice to just view it on site um, I think um, certainly regarding Lewis um, he likes to, if possible, have, have copies of uh, the specification. Um, but maybe it's more for him than for me. I mean, I know where the specification is. It's on site office. So um, I know may, maybe he would like to keep a copy of that for each job in the office. What was meant by manufacturer's instructions? I don't know. Would you normally expect to see copies of manufacturer's instructions on site? On site, yes. They would have all the relevant information on site. Uh, and when you went to the site office, would you actually check these documents? No, not unless there was a reason to check them. Uh, so it wouldn't be that on your first day on the job you go to the site office and review the MBS specification? No. I mean, when I first got my first day of the job, which was in uh, official, which was in February 2015, you know, the whole site was alive with people, things going on. So, um, um, 
So I think I really wanted to get out and, and see what was going on. So I can take it from that on Grenfell then. You didn't look at the MBS on day one. Did no. you ever look at it? Occasionally, yes. What sort of things were you checking it for? Um, if there was, you know, I'd walk around a site and if there was anything I wasn't sure of, um, then if I need to check the, the specification, I would. I think there was, there may have been some examples of that. I, I think I, on some of the newly built flats, um, there was no heat detector in the new kitchens. And uh, I thought that was a bit odd. So uh, I, I checked the specification. Uh, we'll come back to the MBS uh, later when we talk about the cladding. Going now then to um, JRP 50332, which is another set of emails. Uh, and page two again. Uh, this is an email from Claire Williams um, to Louis Zeroa. Uh, did you see <coughs> this at the time? Yes, I think I got, I got a copy of that. So in the first full paragraph there, about halfway through, she says that she'd like to skew the number of days potentially for each clerk of works, which was originally proposed as 40 days each. So yes. that's 80 days in total. Um, but she says there that she needs more for M&E. Yes. Uh, is that what actually happened, that Tony Batty was on site more than you were? Yes, I think um, certainly at the beginning, uh, she was... She she implied that uh, she didn't want me there um, to start with, but uh, as there was lots of M&E going on, she wanted their, Tony there earlier. And also she, she implied that she'd want Tony more than me. So did you get the impression that she was more concerned with M&E yes. than with the general building? Yes, at that stage, works? yes. At that stage, did that concern continue throughout the project, or was there a time when the TMO became more concerned with what you were doing? <coughs> uh, I'm not sure. Um, can you say that question again? Um, so you said at that stage, uh, Claire Williams was more concerned with M&E than she was with general building yes. work. Did that ever change? Uh, I would say it, it equaled out uh, further on down the line. When so, would that have been? So um, when we officially started, which was when I, well, I, I officially started in, in February, um, and that was only actually twice on that month, but um, maybe in March, then, then we were both visiting regularly then every week according to her requirements. Um, you've said... Oh, we've, sorry, we've covered that. Um, so under item one there, we see um, KPI. She's asking you to report on quality workmanship, health and safety, and progress. Yes. Uh, did you get the impression that progress and keeping to programme was a priority for the TMO? Yes, one of their priorities, yes. Uh, moving down the page then to item two, Two, which is just on the second half of the page. Uh, you see there the heading specification. Yes. Uh, she says, the other thing I said I would get to you is specification information, which is all online. I've got no hard copies. And there's a link there. Um, yes. Did you ever click on that link? Did you access it? Uh, yes, we did try to, uh, uh, but we could never achieve, achieve the full information. Um, and there was lots of emails and phone calls about that uh, and eventually what we could uh, obtain um, was only a very limited um, part of the specification which was uh, uh, quite a period after we started but um, again as far as Tony and I, and I was concerned we, um, we could check the specification when we needed on the, on the site. Which part of the specification were you did you manage to obtain in the end? I, I 
it was Tony actually that, that, that actually managed to get in. I think there was only very heating and rainwater pipes or something like that. It was a very limited part of the part of the um, specification. I think that's all. I think it's all recorded in emails. If you go through all the emails. Uh, under item three, there AOB it says further to some of John's comments. I confirm. A windows. I've asked Ryden to send through st sill section drawings earliest. Um, did that ever happen? No, no, I never actually got the drawings. Um, I mean, my, my observation there was, um, in my experience, we've had a lot of problems with pigeons, and and to, to to tell her that um, maybe she need to think about pigeon protection to the the seals. So the reason for asking the for the window drawings was about pigeons rather than yeah. to familiarise yourself with how they were going to be yes. constructed. Yeah. And at the meeting, uh, did you discuss the legal requirements for the project, so the building regulations no. in particular? Uh, were you told by Claire Williams that you were not to check that the works complied with legal requirements? No. Um, did she give you any instructions about um, how you were to liaise with building control? No, we never liaised with building control whatsoever. We had no, no um, official uh, time with them at all. We never got invited to any of their meetings. Um, never asked to talk to them at all. Uh, we'll come back to that under a separate topic. Okay. Uh, in the email, Claire Williams refers to you and to Tony Batty as clerk of works rather than site inspector. Uh, did you think to correct her at the time that she should call you a site inspector? No, I think everyone mixes us up the role, so we're quite used to it. Uh, if we go now to JRP 50336, page 2. <clears throat> Um, that's an email from Tony Batty dated 1st of October. Um, and you've referred in your evidence just now to having a back and forth with the TMO about not being able to access the link. Yes. This, this email mentions that in yes. the first paragraph. And he says he may be better to have everything printed off by TMO and for me to collect it. What do you think? Um, so Tony Batty there seems to want the hard copy drawings. Yes. Um, but that's not something you felt you needed. No, I knew it would be in the office, in the site office. Uh, and do you know if that ever happened, if he ever got hard copies provided I don't know. for him? You have to ask him. Uh, he mentions in that email as well that uh, he had his site induction on the 1st of October. Uh, your induction was the 15th of October, wasn't it? Yes, I believe so. Um, and we can find that in paragraph 25 of your witness statement. <coughs> yes. what, did, what did the induction cover? Uh, basically, general site rules. Um, and uh, uh, safety rules, um, fire egress, um, and that was it really. And then we got a, a Ryden's um, jacket at the end of it. Uh, so it was more about rules for being on site rather than the nature of the work. Yes. Uh, did you discuss the scope of your role with Ryden personnel at that meeting? No. Did you explain to them that you were just there for site inspection, not clerk of works? No, just said we're there as a site inspector and we, we, we'd be coming regularly when time when we're, when we're inspect, instructed. Uh, and did you explain that you were not checking for compliance with no. building regulations? Uh, did you discuss the cladding at all? No. Were you shown any drawings? No, I mean, I was there for a lim limited time. You know, it's a quick in and out job, really. So, um, you know, it's very quick. So I did, however, do a, 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 a mock report as well. So, um, so I wasn't there for very long talking to them at all. Uh, yes, we're coming on to your, your mock report now. Yes. Um, we don't need to look at the report itself. Um, but you send it to Claire Williams, and the reference is um, JRP 50338, page 
Uh, and there <coughs> is an email from you, 17th of October. Hi, Claire. Please find and close our first site inspection report. If we go back a page now to page two, in the middle, sorry, at the bottom, uh, we have an email from Claire Williams of 20th of October 2014. John, I have not agreed a start date for you yet and only found out last week that you had had an induction. I need to monitor the works and your hours, which are not yet agreed. Uh, and then she asks Louis to ring her. Um, she refers to having not agreed a basis for your service. What did you understand that to mean? Um, I think uh, she was, she didn't want us to start yet, or, or me to start yet. So it was just a question of start date. Did you get the impression from the TMO that cost was a concern? Only, the, the, only what she said was, was that, you know, she was obviously checking the hours. We've already noted that you and Tony Batty were to spend 80 days on site split between you. Yeah. Having done your job now and knowing what you know about <coughs> the project, did you consider that to be sufficient? I can't remember. I mean, you'd be able to work out, or someone would be able to work out how many, how many hours we did, how many, uh, because we did... Um, at the end of 2015, we did more than one day a week. Um, but I think initially um, that was sufficient to what she wanted us to do. Um, uh, but however, when so much works was going on at the same time, especially when the snagging was going on, then I asked her, you know, we, we need more time to, to, uh, to do that work, uh, which we we eventually got at the end of 2015, I think, for a small period we had. Uh, we work in there two days a week. So to sum that up in a nutshell, at the time you never felt, I don't have enough time to do this job properly? No, for what, not the, what, she, what she wanted, yes. Were you aware of what others on the project thought your role was? No. Do you think that describing yourself as a clerk of works, for example, by issuing clerk of works reports, as they were titled, that others working on the project may have misunderstood what your role was? Yeah, maybe, yes. If we could go to Claire Williams' uh, witness statement, that's TMO 00840364 at page seven. Uh, and paragraph 34, please. She says there, uh, TMO also engaged John Rowan and partners of Clark of Works to inspect various works on site. This included inspection of workmanship and quality to ensure works were carried out as designed and to challenge Ryden when necessary if there were shortcomings. Yes. Um, <clears throat> they also had a role to report on health and safety issues and it was an additional tier of inspection. Um, do you agree with her summary there of what she asked you to do? Yes. Uh, so part of your role was to ensure that works were carried out as designed? Yes, but not, not, necessarily, not necessarily compliance. But certainly checking to make sure that what was installed reflected what had been designed. Which we did in a way that we checked that the people signing off that compliance had signed it off. Well, it's, a slightly, it's a slightly different question I'm asking, which is, were you checking what was installed on site against the design to see that it matched? Not specifically. Uh, not specifically or not at all? Well, again, I would say that by checking that building control were checking the design and they had no issues, that we were. 
So is it your evidence that it's building control who are to check whether what's installed matches the design? Yes. Okay. Um, so is all you really did on site to check whether building control whether building control were coming? And what and if they had any issues and they were inspecting and there was no problems. And then in terms of workmanship, you were just checking to make sure there's no no damage, no Correct. Um, to materials that were being installed. Yeah, well, it was anything, it was it was it was falling off or it was not it was loose or uh, well, our main role was to check the finished product. So we would do the finishing snagging. I see. You were engaged, and we'll go into more detail on this um, later. But it wasn't just snagging, was it? It was bef- you were on site before the snagging happened. Yes. Yeah, and you were checking works as. Yes. as they went along before snagging. Yes, we were observing everything that went on, yeah. Uh, Peter Madison of the TMO uh, has also described your role. Um, have you heard of or met Peter Madison from the TMO? Yes. Okay. Um, as part of the Grenfell, as part of your role on Grenfell, yes. you met him? Okay. Uh, we don't need to go to the statement. The reference is TMO 00847337, page 8, paragraph 37 he says your job was to report independently on the compliance of the construction work as it proceeded do you agree or disagree with that statement I would disagree with that not not compliance no well when we talk about compliance compliance with what I had rather assumed it was part of your role to check that things were being done broadly in accordance with the drawings We didn't specifically. I didn't specifically check the drawings and, and what was done on site. I was I was observing at a moment, a snapshot of time, one day a week, um, what was going on, and and if there was any problems, I was ensuring that that if there was any problems, for instance, if building control had any issues, then which which there were some issues, uh, then I would uh, highlight those and and try and make sure those issues were resolved. Right. I think if we're going to ask about compliance, we need to know compliance. With what yes. it is, he's supposed to be checking compliance. Uh, yes, Mr Chairman, I'll keep a clear distinction between with the building regulations and with the drawings yeah. Yeah. and going forward. Um, Mr Gibson um, also describes your role as checking for compliance, but he doesn't say with what. Yes. Um, were you aware that some of the TMO thought that your role involved compliance type checking, so either with building regulations no. or drawings? No. Okay. Did anyone at Ryde ever ask you what the scope of your role was? <coughs> no. Um, the Ryde and witnesses in their evidence to this inquiry, uh, in their oral evidence, have also described your role. Uh, Mr. Hughes has said that your role was to check that work was in accordance with specifications and drawings. Um, sounds like you wouldn't agree with that. No. Uh, and Mr. Martin said that he understood you would be inspecting in relation to the building regulations and relevant guidance. No. Um, were you aware of either Mr. Hughes or Mr. Martin's views of your role at the time? No. Did you ever get the impression that different people at Ryden would have different views about the scope of your role? No. What about other professionals on the project, such as Studio E, Artelia Harley? No. Um, so you thought everyone knew what you were there for and what the limits of your job were? Uh, to be honest with you, I, I, mean, I was working for KCTMO, so my concern was what they thought and what, what I was doing for them. Uh, now, in paragraph 48 of your statement, uh, which is on page 6, <clears throat> um, you say that you were not required to check any specific items regarding fire safety. However, if we go forward in your statement to page 8 and paragraph 60... I'll just wait for it to come up. Um, yes. So, paragraph 50, you say... 60, if we saw any fire safety issues during our inspections, they were highlighted to CW. I think that's Claire Williams. Yeah. Um, so you weren't asked to do it, but you did, in fact, 
report issues if you saw them. Of course. Yeah. Um, so would it be fair to say you took the initiative on that aspect? Yes. And I take it those fire safety issues wouldn't include non-compliances with the building regulations? No. If poor workmanship risked com compromising fire safety, um, do you accept that this would have fallen within your remit as a matter to be reported to the TMO? If I saw poor workmanship, I would highlight it in my report and notify Claire Williams. Mm. Um, but I think you've said that using materials different to those specified, even if they compromised fire safety, would not have fallen within your remit? No. Unless I, also, unless I spotted it, if I did spot it. But um, I don't think I ever did. It, well, a lot, whatever I spotted, I highlighted. So if you had spotted something installed that didn't match a drawing and it was a fire safety issue, that's something you would have reported? If I, if I, if I, if I saw it, and if I, if, 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 I, yeah, if I saw it, that it wasn't right, I would, I would let her know. That would depend on you knowing what was in the drawing? Yes. I see. If a failure to undertake works that you knew ought to have been carried out risked fire safety, um, would that have been something you reported? Could you ask that again? Um, we'll come back to it with a specific example, but if you, if you knew that something had to be installed yes. and it hadn't been, is that something you'd have raised? Yes. Now moving on to a new topic, um, which is about access to drawings. I think we can take this quite quickly because we've already discussed it. Mm. Um, if we just go to your statement on page 7, para 51. Um, so you say there, we were never supplied with any drawings and had very limited specifications. If there was a need to look at any drawings, then Ryden provided them on site. Yes. And all the specifications and drawing had been approved before we even got to site. Yes. Um, based on what you've already said, um, drawings were available for you to check on site. Yes. Is that right? Yes. Um, you were, in fact, emailed drawings from time to time from Ryden personnel, weren't you? No, I never got any emails email drawings at all. Okay. Uh, could we look at RYD 308812? Uh, so if we zoom in, um, this is an email from David Hughes on the 24th of November to you. Subject line, revised Harley drawing. Hi, John. Please see attached the following revised drawing. This shows how we're actually fitting the uplift trim to the cladding panels. Um, so Mr. Hughes sent you a drawing. This, I think, was a request I asked for, I think, and he couldn't find it at the time when I was on site. Uh, go to MAX 405878, page 2. Uh, and zoom in um, again... <coughs> David Hughes, and you are there on the circulation list. Your email address is there. Do you see that? Yes. Yeah, it's sort of fourth line down. Um, dear all, please see following drawings attached as mentioned in design team minutes. And that includes the fire strategy. Um, so again, Mr. Hughes is sending you drawings there in that email. Some drawings, yes, yes. I mean, I didn't get. I wasn't a part of a a, an issue, a drawing issue. I, I, they, he may have sent me the odd drawing here and there. So from time to time, Ryden sent you drawings, either for your information or on request. Yes. Okay. Um, was there ever an occasion where you asked to see a drawing and were not provided with it, either there and then or later by email? Not that I can recall. No. Do you recall seeing drawings of the cladding? Uh, I did see some drawings, yes. Uh, do you recall seeing drawings showing the location of cavity barriers within the cladding? Not specifically, no. Is that something that you would have been interested in, where the cavity barriers were located? 
Not specifically, no. And is that because you didn't see yourself as having a role in design? We didn't have any role in design, no. Do you recall seeing design drawings of the windows? No. Uh, and did you feel at the time that you had sufficient access to drawings? I knew that all the drawings would be in the site office, yes. Um, just checking on specifications, you said that you've said to us that you had seen the MBS specification on site. Yes. If I could just take you to a particular part of it, it's SEA five zero is one six nine page sixty three. So that's a section rain screen cladding. Um, if we go over the page. Uh, we see it starts there, H92. Uh, did you look at that at the time? No. Uh, so you didn't think to check what had been specified in respect of the cladding? No. So oh, you... I was only there one day a week, so, you know, um, I had limited time, and uh, my role was was not to, not to, to check all the drawings or any of the specifications, so... Um, no, I didn't read all the all the the, the specifications. No. Um, if we go to H A R four zeros nine seven three five. Uh, that's Harley's specification for the cladding. Did you ever see that? No. Uh, and did you ever ask to see it? No. Did you know at the time what materials were being used in the facade for the cladding panels above the fourth floor? No. So you didn't know it was ACM? No. no. Um, did you know what the insulation was being used in the cladding system? No. Did you know broadly what type it was, so not the brand, but that it was PIR? Not specifically, no. Um, did you know which cavity barriers were being used? No, not specifically, but I saw them being installed. Uh, and did you know what the white window infill panels were, both the large ones and the small ones housing the kitchen no. extract fans? And you never asked? No. Were you ever provided with manufacturer's instructions for these products? No. And did you ever ask to see those? No. Um, so you weren't then, or you didn't consider it your role, to check whether any of those products were installed in compliance with the manufacturer's instructions? No, I didn't think that was my role, no. Uh, if we go uh, now back to Mr Batty's evidence, it's a different form of statement. It's <coughs> one that's given to the police. It's met... 3023699 at page 10. So at the very bottom, he starts the last sentence, my role was, <coughs> and then on to page 11. That once they had started the installation to go and check that it was a good standard and good quality, um, Claire Williams asked me what I needed, and I asked for the specifications and drawings, but she told me to contact Max Fordham. Uh, so I told her it would be best to have a meeting. We went to their local office. Um, he goes on, I sat down with Duncan Campbell and got given both electrical and mechanical specifications. I also got an A3 set of drawings for the whole site. I checked that he was okay with me reporting against the drawings and specifications if I saw something that I was against, and he agreed. Mm -hmm. um, you didn't adopt a similar approach to Mr. Batty? No. Why not? Because I had all the information on site, if I wanted it. Uh, Mr. Batty says there um, that he checked that Duncan Campbell was OK with me reporting against the drawings and specifications if I saw something that I was against and he agreed. Yes. But you didn't consider it your role to do that. Well, I, I, if, if I'm, if I'm on my site inspections, I saw anything that was um, 
I was unsure of or, or need to be resolved, then I'll check the drawings and specification on site. I see. Uh, <coughs> moving on to a new topic, uh, which is insulation. Um, you've already told us that you weren't aware uh, what the insulation was being used in the cladding. Um, did you ever hear anyone mention any brand names on site like Celotex or Kingspan? No. Uh, if we go to JRP 50171. Uh, this is one of your site inspection reports, uh, yes. dated 24th of April 2015. Mm -hmm. uh, if we could go to page two, please. Under the box works in progress, which is in the top third. Uh, it says, um, in the third line down, the cladding insulation has fireproofing and cladding rails has started on the west and north elevations only. Uh, what did you mean by the cladding insulation has fireproofing? It means the, the, um, the fire barriers. I see, so it's a reference to the cavity barriers. Yes. Yeah. Why did you call that fireproofing? Just a term. Use. Uh, did you think that the client, Claire Williams, would understand what you meant by that? I, I don't know. You have to ask her. Okay. Who told you that it had um, fireproofing, or was it just something you observed? Well, I could see the barriers being installed. Um, in his witness statement to the inquiry, Mr. Hughes of Ryden um, says that he told you what kind of insulation was being installed on the tower. If we go to that um, to see the words he uses, it's <coughs> RYD 3094213. And it's page 10, para 55. <coughs> So he says there, in December 2015 or January 2016, I discussed with Ben Bailey and agreed the use of Kingspan as Harleys had difficulty obtaining Celotex from their supplier. Uh, and then at the last line, so the last sentence, he says, I told Steve Blake and the clerk of works, John White, of this use of Kingspan insulation material. Do you recall that conversation? No, I don't. Definitely not. I would have... Um definitely put it in my report if that was the case when you looked at the insulation being installed on the face of the tower um, did you note any markings on it not specifically no okay uh, if we could go to RYD 3055130 uh, and if we zoom in it's about two thirds of the way up. Uh, we can see one, two, three, uh, four, sort of four floors up from the bottom of that picture. You can see some markings on the insulation. It's quite difficult to see, but they are there. I can't really see it actually, to be honest with you. No, um, it is a little bit fuzzy. What those markings are, we think, is um, Kingspan branding. Do you recall ever seeing branding on the insulation? No, I don't. Okay. No. Uh, do you recall seeing a protective film over the cladding panels with the name Rainabond on it? No. The only film I remember seeing was the protection to the, the panels themselves, that was just protecting the panels. Yes, that's the, that's the film I'm talking about, the film oh. protecting the panels. Did you see it had branding on it? No, not that I recall. I just remember seeing the film on it. Um, so did you know that the design of the cladding system did not provide for any cavity barriers around the windows? No, we were not, we were not involved with any design issues at all 
Um, we, we started, as I said, in, in February, so a lot of the design had been done. Um, but when you were on site looking at the installation, did you note that there were no cavity barriers around the windows? No, I didn't. And is that because you weren't aware that that was advised in the approved document B guidance that there should be? <coughs> Um, I would say that if there was something wrong with the insulation or lack of cavity barriers, then building control would have spotted that and, and therefore highlighted it, highlighted it. So I would say if, if, if there was any concerns, then that's how I'd pick it up, by picking up what building control had seen and, what, and if there was any issues, and then I'd highlight it in my report. Um. Mr. Martin of Ryden has told the inquiry in his oral evidence that you might have been the person who told him that cavity barriers were not required around the windows. Would no. that have been you? No. Uh, if we could go to ART 405636 <clears throat> on page 17. We'll have to go to the first page first, sorry. Um, so that's Artelia's Certificate of Practical Completion. Yes. Um, did you see that at the time? Uh, I think I may have got a copy of it. If this was right to the end of the job, wasn't it? Yes. I mean, we weren't... We were actually finished by then. So I think I may have got that in a, a later email after the job had finished. Um, if we could go to page 17, please. Um first email which is at the bottom from Andrew Malcolm on the 15th of July um, we believe that's an email to you and we can tell I think from the reply which we'll go to in a second John further to our discussion can you please write back and confirm that all the items listed below and in the attached are considered de minimis and that the entirety of the works are compliant with the employer's requirements and then scroll up the page to a reply from you uh, Hi, Andrew. Yes, I can confirm. All items are just awaiting final de-snagging, which should take place early next week. None of these items should affect PC. Um, he had specifically asked you to confirm that the works complied with the employer's requirements. Um, were you giving that confirmation in this email? Um, what I was saying, I think he was asking me, was uh, whether all the snagging and de-snagging to be complete, which, which this is what I was trying to say here. Well, he asked you a second, second part of the question, which yes. was, do all works comply with the employer's requirements? So you didn't answer that question in, in this email, no. did you? No, because I just referred to the snagging. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I, I didn't sign off compliance, therefore, uh, um, yeah, I was just concentrating on the snagging. Um, do you think it's possible that it was taken from your email that you had confirmed that everything complied? Well, I didn't actually say that, did I? So I would say no. Um, thank you, Mr Chairman. That's probably a, an approved moment That a convenient a moment? Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, Mr White, we're going to have a short break now. Um, <clears throat> we'll come back uh, and resume questions at half past three, please. Okay. Um, I have to ask you not to talk to anyone about your evidence or anything relating to it. Okay. While you're out of the room, if you would, please. Okay. Um, so if you'd like to go to the usher, she will look after you. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you very much. Right, half past three, please. Thank you. Thank you.
Yes, would you ask Mr White to come back in, please? All right, Mr. White, are you yes. ready to carry on? Yes, I am, yeah. Thank you very much. Yes, Ms. Grogan. Uh, thank you, Mr. White. We're moving on to a new topic now, which okay. is your inspections of the cladding. Yes. Um, Mr. Osgood of Ryden has described a process of inspection whereby the cladding was inspected by you two floors at a time. Is that right? No, that would be... No, it would be impractical to do that. Um, so could you just describe for me then how you went about inspecting the cladding and at what stages? Yes, I... Um, initially, um, I went on the climbers and I, and I had to rely on, obviously, them to, to come down and, and, and I couldn't drive it myself. Uh, but generally, I would um, get them to collect me and then I'd go on the climber and <coughs> I would um, just check what they were doing um, uh, uh, which I did, uh, um, and where they're actually working, I'd, I'd, I'd be in the area where they were working, um, just checking that you know all the everything looked properly fitted. There's no loose materials or any damage, um, and that's what I do before uh, a few times before the snagging started. So when the snagging started, um, I was asked to inspect the, the, the areas I was told that it was ready for snagging, uh, that it was complete uh, and, and all finished. Um, and I remember the first time they arranged and I arranged to meet, um, I went up on the climber, mask climber, and I think we'd always generally start, mask climber was, was um, there was two mask climbers of elevation and um, I'd, I'd go up on the top, to the top of the, uh, one of the elevations on the mask liner, and uh, initially we'd start the inspections of the cladding for the snagging. Um, I remember the first inspection I did, um, there was lots of scratches and, and uh, the, the finished product wasn't very good, and so I rejected it. I said, I'm not inspecting it until you've, you look at it yourself and make, ensure that all the, it's, it's a presentable um, finish. I see. So I, I then came back uh, at a later time, maybe a week, week later, I can't remember, and that's when I started doing the, the snagging. And I had, um, I always had normally Ben with me, the cladder. I sometimes had um, a member of Ryden's staff with me, but we would start, um, it, normally an elevation would be ready for me. So I would start on a t climber that would be right at the top, and I would work my, my way down the whole width of the, cl of the climber, which would be normally half an elevation. So we would go from top to bottom, all the way down, every, checking every single floor. We wouldn't do two floors, that would be impractical. We would do every single floor, all the way down to the third floor, because that's where all, a lot of the works had been finished. Th three floors, floors below, they were part of the lower floor works and they weren't ready. So we go from top to bottom down to third floor and then we'd go across to the next climber go all the way up and start again going all the way down and so I'd re be recording uh, with my iPad all the snags uh, and then uh, I would make that list as a, as a snagging list um, and then I would issue that to Rydens uh, who would issue it to the cladding contractor. I see. Um, just a few follow-up questions on that. Yeah. Um, did you ever inspect the cladding before the cladding panels had been installed? Not, not specifically. I mean, I, I, in my general inspections, I did, but I was never um, asked to inspect um, anything specifically before the cladding panels went on, no. So did you ever go up the mast climbers to look at insulation and cavity barriers? Yes, when I, when I did my normal site inspections, I did, yes. I see. Um, you've said in your statement that um, you compiled 35 reports, I think. <coughs> yes. Um, of those 35 inspection visits, how many times did you go up the mass climbers? Um, I would say probably including snagging 
and do staying, I can only estimate, of probably um, uh, between 10 and 12 times, maybe. So before the snagging inspections, yeah. and at the time you were observing insulation and cavity barriers, what were you looking for? Generally, the, the, the work was neat and tidy, it wasn't damaged, um, that everything to, seemed to be the same, you know, it was, it was, it was, um, it was all uh, fitted with the same detail, there was no damage, um, and the, the, the insulation was, there was no holes in the insulation, the, the fixings were, were not loose, um, Generally, I was just che checking that, that there was nothing that, that stood out. Um, you say there um, it was all fitted with the same detail, so you were looking for consistency, yes. but not checking against any yes. drawings to see yes. if it matched. Yes. I see. Um, and what value do you think you were adding to the client by doing that? Um, I think... If it was a, 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 a job where it was very untidy or it didn't appear to be um, fitted properly or there's problems, I would notify that to her. And, and I think because building control were regularly visiting and, and they were checking for compliance, if they had any issues, then I would have looked at the cladding more. At more. I mean, I think when I started in January, I think it was only a couple of months after that that Building Control, I got a notification that Building Control had passed three floors of, of all the windows snagging, uh, sorry, windows, the cladding, the fire breaks, and, and, and had proved it all. So uh, my immediate reaction was that, you know, everything was fine with the, with the compliance of the snagging. I see. So because you were aware that Building Control had been and building control, you were told, had said the cladding was compliant. Yes. Um, you felt you didn't need to focus too much on it. Yes. I mean, I, I basically did what, as I was going back to before, I, I did what was required by the client. Um, at this period, point of period also, I must say, that um, Claire Williams wanted me to, to really focus on the residents. Um, you know, remember I had 120 flats that were being operated on and worked on, and and her focus was to make sure the the residents. To me, she kept on telling me. I mean, I was close conversation with with Kay Williams, you know, many days, and um, she often asked me specifically to go to flat such and such to see that resident. So so, a lot of my focus was was really on what she wanted me to do, and that was to to, to focus on the residents. Did any residents ever raise any concerns with you about the cladding? Not with me. I think when I first, uh, I mean, not in, remember, it's not only the cladding, it's everything else going on. There's, 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 I think I counted 18 items of work that went on in each flat. So every item, 18 items of work plus times 120, you can imagine what, what work was going on. Um, but when I first joined uh, um, in February, when, when I first, there was a, a, a concern not that, that was highlighted to me via Claire Williams that there was a rattling going on um, with some cladding outside, what the resident complained of. Uh, and that was an example of Claire Williams wanting me to check it, which I did. And what, what that was, there was a, a, a bracket that was fixed, that was being fitted, and um, you know it hadn't been fitted tight enough during the evening, and then it was rattling in the night. So then I went up and checked. Um, if we could now go to JRP uh, <coughs> 50147. So that's another of your site visit reports, <coughs> this time 12th of November 2015. Uh, and again, page two into the building control box. Now, just as a general question, when you were filling in this building control box, how did you get the information to populate that? Uh, mostly from asking the, the um, site staff from Rydens. So it was Rydens uh, telling you what building control had said and telling you when they'd visited? Yes, mostly, but I did get also... Uh, it was in, 
And it was also building control of the information on um, KCTMO newsletters. And there was also um, uh, building inspection control information on uh, Ryden's uh, newsletters as well and, uh, and um, site progress meetings and, and, and reports. So there was other, lots of information regarding building control. Uh, but by and large, it was second-hand. Yes. 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 Um, so in that building control box then on page two, it refers <clears throat> to building control inspecting two elevations of the cladding. Um, did you attend that inspection with building control on the 12th of November? No, I didn't, no. Um, but you did carry out an inspection on the 11th of November. Is that right? You went up the cladding? Sorry, where does it say that? Um, so we have that from a, Mr. Hughes gave evidence to the inquiry um, on day 27, page 95, line 25. <clears throat> <clears throat> I'm sorry, I think, sorry, that's a, ref that's a reference to what John Hoban would have seen into his inspection. I'll ask my question in a different way. In around November 2015, did you ever attend an inspection and go up the mass climbers with John Hoban? Not that I can remember. Yeah. Did you ever carry out an inspection with John Hoban there at the same time as you? No, not that I can remember. Um, did you ever speak directly to John Hoban? Yes, I did meet him on site. Yes. Um, were you ever a party to any conversations um, where John Hoban, where you heard John Hoban being told that the cladding system had been fitted to many buildings throughout England and Wales to buildings of a similar or heightened no. construction? No. Um, were you ever party to a conversation where John Hoban was told that cladding would comply with the standards set out in approved document B? No. And did you hear or were you party to discussions where John Hoban was told that cladding panels were class not or above? No, I mean, I was never, I never involved in any meetings with building control. As I said, either uh, there was some meetings on site, I wasn't invited to that. And I only had a brief discussion with him. Uh, I'm now going to move on and ask you some questions about cavity barriers. Uh, so in your general inspections of the cladding, uh, when you were looking at cavity barriers, what defects and issues were you looking to pick up? Just to make sure they were fitted securely, uh, there was no damage, they were consistent, uh, and, and uh, really, again, um, make sure that the people that, that were signing off compliance, which is building control, that they were happy with it. Um, did you ever pick up on any issues such as that with the cavity barriers? No. Uh, could we go to BLAS, uh, and then it's, I think, 608, page 48. Uh, and it's figure 8.52. If we could zoom in on that a little bit. Um, now, what this shows here is a ciderized cavity barrier with the marking RH25. Can you see that blown up in yes, the little box? Yeah. Um, would you have been aware at the time that that signals that it's a horizontal cavity barrier? No, I wouldn't be aware of that. Okay. Um, but we see there it's installed in the vertical position. Mm -hmm. um, were you aware that cavity, the vertical cavity barriers, um, let me put that a different way. The, <clears throat> if we look at the green marking there, um, there's an intumescent strip on the outside of that, which when exposed to heat would normally expand to fill the gap in a rain screen cladding system. Were you aware of that feature of cavity barriers in rain screen systems? Not specifically, no. 
Uh, so you wouldn't be aware then that vertical cavity barriers usually don't have that strip and are just a solid block of inert material? No. Do you recall seeing any instances of that kind of installation, so the green, green coloured strip type cavity barrier in a vertical orientation? No, not that I can recall. Um, if we could just go back a page or to page 46, so back two pages, sorry. <clears throat> um, figure 8.50, we see another example of cavity barrier installation here. Now, Dr. Lane notes that that cavity barrier is poorly fitting, and you can see in the top picture the intumescent strip has come, up, come away from the material it's attached to. If you had seen that at the time, is that something you'd have picked up? Yes, if it was obvious, I would have um, informed Ryden and uh, put it on my report. So you would have picked up poorly fitting cavity barriers? Yes, um, if it didn't look right, yes. How would you know that it was poorly fitting or incorrectly installed uh, if you hadn't checked the manufacturer's instructions? Only by what it looks like. Uh, so how... What would you expect a cavity barrier to look like if it was properly fitted? Well, to make sure it's secure. There's no damage. I see. Now, Ben Bailey of Harley's uh, has said in his statement to the inquiry... <clears throat> Um, that when he saw the photographs that Dr Lane has identified in her report, and I've, I've not taken you to all of them, uh, that he was shocked uh, and that if he'd seen those issues on site, he would have instructed them to be corrected. Uh, the reference for the transcript for that uh, is HAR 3010060, page 10, paragraph 32. Um, would you have been similarly shocked? Yes, I mean, it doesn't look right, and I would have, I would have taken a photograph and I'd have put it in my report. Uh, but as you said earlier, you didn't see any examples such no. as that. I mean, I was only there at the moment of chop, slap chop chop time. You know, I, I, when I went up, there was, I was only there one day a week, so, and I didn't go up the mask climbers every time. So, you know, I, I only small, saw a small amount of, of the works going up, really, apart from when I was doing the snagging. What was your overall impression of the quality of the cladding installation? My impression, it looked very neat. And uh, when I first went up mask climbers, um, I just observed what was going on, see if they were doing everything safely. Uh, and I spoke briefly to the men. They, they, they seemed very experienced. They, done previous jobs with um, Rydens, rain cleans, this type of cladding, um, and they, they seemed very experienced. And what I noticed, what I saw, normally if a job <coughs> looks neat and tidy, it's normally a good way of thinking whether it's been done properly. Uh, moving on now to the, the window installation, we know you inspected flats internally. <coughs> Um, did this include inspection of the windows before they were sort of covered up, decorated and finished? No. Um, so you wouldn't have seen then what was being installed in any gaps around the windows in terms of insulation? No, I did, I, I, again, I inspected all the works when I did the snagging. Okay. Uh, so we can take it from that you weren't aware of the kind of insulation that was being installed no. in that location. Uh, Mr. Martin of Ryden says that uh, <clears throat> you would have seen that insulation um, installed around the windows. Do you have any comment on that? Um, I was with Mr. Martin doing all the snagging and when I was doing all the snagging all the works were finished so I wouldn't be able to see the insulation.
we've already discussed building control uh, in a little bit as we've gone through your questions this afternoon. Um, <coughs> my next topic covers that as well. <coughs> uh, so if we go back to your statement um, on page 7, paragraph 53, uh, you say, um, we understood that as building control were inspecting and signing off the building that it complied, this responsibility lay with them. Uh, do you accept that just because building control has an obligation to check for compliance, that doesn't necessarily mean others on a project don't have their own obligations to check as well? And when I talk about compliance here, I mean with the building regulations. I mean, I would say the, the a big responsibility laid with uh, Ryan's the main contractor uh, and the people fitting it. And why would involvement of building control mean that JRP didn't have to provide the full service, which we've looked at in the ITT, that it had contractually agreed to provide? Well, the full, full service was a clerk of works role, and we weren't there as a clerk of works. We were there as a site inspector. And our role was defined by what was discussed with the meeting with Claire Williams. She never asked us to, to check for compliance. And on the ITT, it never said check for compliance. We've been through that already, um, yeah. Mr White. The ITT did say familiarise yourself with legal requirements. But it didn't say actually check for compliance. Um, we can come back to that later if we yeah. need to. Yeah. If we go to uh, JRP... I'll do that one, actually. Um, JRP 50148... <coughs> So this is your site inspection report of the tw number 25 of 17th of November. And again, if we go to page two in the building control box, uh, it says there, we scrolled down, I think. Yes, RBK building control was last on site today, looking at the cladding. Apart from damaged paddles, bits are making good. He was generally happy. Um, was that information there <coughs> obtained from a direct conversation you had with building control? No, it was from, from um, Rydens. See. So you wouldn't know then what was meant by generally happy? No. If we go to back to your statement, page four... Uh, and it's paragraph 31. You refer to updates um, reporting what building control had said coming from Claire Williams. And you say you received updates via email from her. Do you have a record of those emails? Sorry, what number? What, what, Sorry, it's paragraph 31. It says, we were also sent updates via email by Claire Williams which would sometimes be the source of information in the reports, e.g. visits from building control. Yeah, I think that was in relation to um, uh, the KCTMO newsletter, which had information on the building control. I see. So Claire Will Williams wouldn't send you specific emails detailing discussions with building control or information about building control? No, but it's, she obviously she sent me an email with the, with the newsletter on which, which mentioned building control. Could we now go to JRP 50208? Uh, so this is an email chain. Uh, if we start on page two, it's an email there from John Allen dated the 24th of March 2016. Um, and his email says, cladding nearly complete. Ensure thermal insulation completely filled nursery. Hang on a second, sorry. We might need to come back to that. That's not, I don't think that's quite the email I wanted to take you to. But if we go um, <clears throat> further up back to page one, we see an email from you. Uh, which says, thanks for this, David. Can we make sure we tick off each item, please? Uh, what further checks did you undertake to ensure each item had been checked off? 
Sorry, what's this in relation to? I, I can only see a bit of the email. Yes, trail. sorry, I, um, I probably went a little too fast there. If we go back to page two, we'll see a list of things from John Allen. Uh, that's a much better quality than um, what I'd seen previously. The thing I wanted to ask you about was item two says, ensure thermal insulation completely fills voids. Do you know what that meant? Not specifically, but I had thought that there were some gaps in some of the insulation. Uh, and then the email we looked at on page one is you asking Ryden to ensure each item is ticked off. Did, did, I, get, did I get that, that You that did, email? yes. So yeah. if you look at 24th of March 2016, I'm aware the the font is probably not that helpful for reading. It says, Hi, John and Tony, please see comments below from today's visit from Building Control. Happy to discuss with both of you when you're next on site. <coughs> All right, yeah. And you reply and say, thanks for this, David. Can we make sure we tick off each item, please? Right. Did you ever follow that up to check it had been done? I, I can't recall that that uh, email. Um, however, I may have... May have uh, Asked him by phone or by by talking to him, uh, but I always try to follow up items regarding building control and 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 put it on my report. So I think if there was anything outstanding, I'd have put it on my report. Now, Mr. Hoban's evidence is that if he had any concerns after inspection, he would raise this with the site manager and the clerk of works. So that's you. Um, do you recall him raising any specific issues? No, he never never. As I said to you, apart from brief discussion, he never raised any issues with me with, at all. Um, he also says that he would raise matters with the site manager or person who was accompanying him on his visits and the clerk of works when we did joint visits, and that's a reference to paragraph, paragraph 58B of his second statement. Um, do you agree that you did joint visits with Mr. I can't Hoban? remember ever doing a joint visit with him. As I said, but I do remember meeting him once on site. Just the once? Yes, and speaking to him. I did see him other times, but I only actually met and spoke to him once. When was that? Uh, I've no idea now, but I did record it somewhere in some of my emails. In an email, you say? In some, in some of my emails, yes. I did record it. I remember recording it. Yes. Or it may be in my statement. I remember. remember um, How long through the project was it? At the beginning, middle, end? I think it was sort of. It may have been the end part of 2015, I think. And what did you discuss in that face-to-face -face conversation? Oh, we had a very brief discussion. Um, I think I I did say. Um, what do you think of the cladding? And I think he said it was a good, tidy install. So there was no concerns. And he, he, I remember specifically mentioning he was very busy doing lots of basements in Kensington. Um, moving on um, to a different topic, were you ever asked to check the O&M manual for the project? Uh, not specifically, no. Um, I remember the owner, owner manual being produced, um, but not. No, I didn't. I was never asked to specifically look at it, or I can't recall looking at it. But I remember it being done. Uh, if we could go to JRP five zeros one five five. So this is your site inspection report of 3rd of February 2016. And if we go to page two, and if we could zoom in. There on, hang on one second. Yes, if we zoom in under risk items, health and safety, etc. at the bottom. It says, Rydens are to submit revised construction H&S plan to clear of the KCTMO as a matter of urgency. 
Are you just reporting there what others had said, or is that something that was on your list of things to yeah, worry about? Yeah, I was just reporting that that was um, something that the the riders had got to provide to, to Claire, because I think they was they were being very slow in doing it. Did you check that it was done? Uh, it was an ongoing, ongoing all the time. I mean, the, it was it was being updated every week. So um, yes, I mean I was I was monitoring it, and I knew that Claire wanted it. I think that also we discussed that at that time we, we went to some of the site meetings. So at that time that was discussed a lot at the site meeting. Um, I'm going to ask you now about your relationship with Ryden. Um, if we could go to JRP 6035. <clears throat> uh, this is an email from Simon Lawrence to Claire Williams and you are copied into it. Uh, it's dated 19th of February 2015. Um, and he says there in the second paragraph, one item I'd like to clarify is that reading a report in isolation doesn't always give a fair reflect <coughs> of the overall works and what the end result will achieve. And he's talking there about the Clark of Works reports. Yes. Um, And he says, in this case, whilst a report is helpful in identifying areas of concern, it's only a snapshot of the works on the day. It would be more beneficial for my site team to coordinate with Tony John so that Clark of Works inspections follow our own inspections. <clears throat> Otherwise, it'll end up causing concern. Uh, do you recall receiving that email at the time? Yes, I do remember this email I do remember the incident I think it was um, Tony Batty had uh, an M&E query regarding the one of the new petitions uh, and he put it on his report and uh, uh, later on we found out Tony found out that the it was regarding um, a, a detail on the fire petition uh, and we, we found out that it wasn't a firewall so therefore um, he reported something that was 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 not a problem. So we agreed amongst all of us that for future reports, if there's anything, any problems we had, any concerns, we would we would check the drawings before we put it on our reports. So um, and that's what we did. We we um, if there's any issues, we used to go back down to the office and check the drawings. Um, were you aware that at times Ryden um, thought? Uh, that your presence was unhelpful? Um, I think... I, I think our relationship early doors with Rydens was difficult because we, we came not at the beginning of the job, we weren't part of the main team, we, we only started very late and they, I, I, they weren't keen for us to be there. And, and they didn't really make us very welcome. Uh, however, when Dave Hughes started, um, he understood that we were there to also help, and we had a much better relationship. So I'd say um, one one team particularly didn't want us to be there, and weren't particularly didn't, uh, weren't particularly helpful. Where where Dave Hughes was very helpful, and we tried to work together. Uh, if we could um, go now to ART 406688, um, the documents show that on the 12th of January 2016, you attended a meeting with Mr. Hughes, Tony Batty, Andrew Malcolm of Artelia, and Matt Smith of Max Fordham. Uh, and it was intended to be a Clark of Works reports review. Do you recall that happening? Yes, I do. Um, and in that meeting, you sat down, went through all of your reports and noted all the outstanding items. Is that right? Yes. Um, so if we go to page five of those uh, meeting minutes, please. Um, <clears throat> and we'll see there, That's a. it starts on the previous page, but that's a list of John White issues. 
So these are issues you had identified. Do you recognize those? Yes. yes. Um, and four from the bottom, it says fireproofing all around site needs to be done as per the fire strategy. Um, is that something you had identified yourself or is this reporting an issue picked up by somebody else? I think um, it's something that, that I, I felt needed to be need to be checked and that um, I'm just ensuring that Ryden's were complying. And what fireproofing were you referring to? Fire strategy, that is. So I think there was some... <coughs> can't be specific, but there was um, some fire strategy discussion with building control and Ryden's that I was no party of, but I overheard. So I thought there's maybe a fire issue there that just needs to be resolved. Okay. So you couldn't tell us specifically no. what it was about? I think it was, uh, it's, it's certainly internal. Um, I think it was, um, could have been fire dampers in the boxing boxing club, I, I seem to remember, but that it was, it was definitely internal. I see. Um, following the fire, did you have any discussions with other people from JRP about JRP's involvement with uh, the Grenfell refurbishment? What in what we team? You mean staff of JRP? Yes. Um, yes, just my close colleagues. Yes. When did you have those discussions? Um, certainly, a few weeks after the fire. In his statement to the inquiry, Mr. Verdi has also said that you were not a clerk of works in the typical sense. Is that something you discussed with one another after the fire? No, it's just something we discuss throughout. I mean, that was, I mean, for the for, for last five or six years, I've been doing site inspection. So, um, you know, that, that's what we were, site inspectors then. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I've uh, mm -hmm. reached the end of my questions, right. um, but I'm aware there may be questions from others. So yes. if we could take a pause and then... In the resume. usual way. All right. Uh, do you think 10 minutes is enough or a bit uh, more? Yes, I think that's fine, Mr Chairman. Well, Mr White, um, Ms Grogan has got to the end of the questions she had okay. prepared, but she needs an opportunity okay. just to check that there aren't any things that she's overlooked. And there may be questions from others that uh, okay. we may need to ask you. So we're going to stop now and come back at 20 past four. Okay. And then we'll see if there are any more questions for you at that stage. All right? Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, again, please don't talk to anyone okay. about your evidence while you're out of the room. Right, thank, thank you. you. Much. Would you like to go with the usher? Please? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right, 20 past four. If you need more time, just let us know. Will do.
Thank you. Would you ask Mr White to come back in, please? All right, Mr White, we'll see if there are any more questions for okay. you. No, Thank Ms. you. Grogan, have you found any questions? I have found just the, the one and possibly a follow-up. Um, no? So, uh, Mr White, earlier this afternoon, um, I asked you whether the ITT uh, from KCTMO said um, that you needed to familiarise yourself with legal requirements, and you agreed that it did, but you said, but it didn't actually say check for compliance. If we could go back to JRP uh, 6011, page 4. You'll see there again in the third point from the bottom, <clears throat> it does say being familiar with legal requirements and checking that the work complies with them. Yes, and I believe I did that by checking that the, the work was signed off by the compliance person which is building control. Was there ever an occasion where Claire Williams said to you in terms, you do not need to check for yourself that the works comply with the legal requirements? No, never. Was there ever an occasion where Claire Williams said to you in terms, you do not need to be familiar with the drawings and check that they reflect what is installed on site? Well, I did not. Could you say that again? Sorry. Um, was there ever an occasion when Claire Williams said to you that you did not need to check that what was installed reflect matched what was on the drawings? No, nor did she say check it either. either. Well, can you help me with this? Did she leave you with the understanding that it wasn't part of what she wanted you to do to check work against drawings or no, other she never, requirements? No, she never requested that at all, that we do that. Yes, but you see, <laughs> councils asked you whether she said you weren't to do something, and you said, well, she didn't say I was to do it. Yes. What I'm now asking you to help us with, okay, what no, she understanding never... with you left with... Uh, as a result of any particular conversation first? No, she never asked us not to. I'm not quite sure you're Getting the gist. my okay. point. Did you have a, can you remember a particular conversation with Claire Williams where the scope of your work came up? Yes. Can you remember when that was? Well, we discussed uh, uh, our role when we, we came to site on the, uh, in September. Right. And we had an interview with her. And after you'd finished that conversation discussing your role, yes. how did you understand, or what did you understand your role to be? What did you understand her to be asking you to do? To be her eyes and ears, and to, like, like we, we've recorded on the email, check, uh, do KPIs, check quality, check health and safety, make sure you look after my residents, and that, that was her focus. Yeah. All right, thank you. Now, do you want to follow that up at all? Uh, no, I think... I think we have what we need. Thank you, Mr Chairman. All right. Good. And those are all your questions? Yes. Thank you very much. Well, Mr White, those are all the questions we have for you. Thank, Thank you me. very much for coming to give your evidence. It's been very useful to hear what you have to tell us. And you're now free to go. Thank you. Could, could, I, could I just say something? Yes. Um, I'm now... I've got two more years to retirement. I've been in this industry all my life. And I'd just like to say, when I started this industry, the... All the responsibilities were clear that you had an architect that did the design. Mm. You had an M&E that did the design, a structural engineer that did, the, did the, all the calculations. The architect was, was the lead designer and um, he designed everything and you had a builder to build. Uh, now it's all mixed up uh, and a builder is good at building, but a building builder is not good at designing. So I think I wish we could go back to what it was when I started. Well, you may not be alone in that, but uh, <laughs> that's as may be. Anyway, thank you very much for your observation. Thank you. Uh, thank you for coming to give your evidence. Thank you. And you're now free to go. Thank you very much. All right, thank, thank you. you. Thank you.
Well, thank you very much, Ms. Grogan. That must be it for the day, I think. It is for the day, and then on Monday it's me again with Mr. Verdi. Right. Well, we'll look forward to hearing you again on Monday. Uh, we'll now break until 10 o'clock on Monday morning. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>